This video illustrates how to use the alpha integration of RStudio and Terra using Bioconductor and a single cell experiment package as a concrete example. For full context and link to resources, see the Terra blog post linked in the video description. I'm starting from a clone of the Bioconductor workspace, which includes a tutorial for getting started with a package called single cell experiment. I can click it to open it in a preview mode and look at the contents. And you see there's an example data set bundled with the package, which is provided in this structured format called single cell experiment. Scrolling down, you see various commands illustrating how to run common single cell analysis tasks on that data structure. And there's actually a whole ecosystem of tools in Bioconductor that can be used with this. But the notebook doesn't show you how to get your data into that structure in the first place, so I thought I'd show you how to do that using RStudio and Terra. To launch RStudio the first time, you need to go to the Cloud Environment widget here in the top right corner and select RStudio in the menu of Application Configuration Options. Here I've already selected it, but if this is not what you see, click here to expand the menu and scroll down until you find it. You can tell this is the active selection because it's in bold type and it has this little check mark on the right. By the way, you'll see there are a couple of other environment options named R Bioconductor, but those are only for using Bioconductor in Jupyter Notebooks, not RStudio. Right now, we don't yet have an environment that can do both, so you have to pick one or the other. When you're done with that, you'll have to click the update button and wait a couple of minutes for your environment to be ready. Mine is already set up and running, so I can dismiss this menu and simply click the RStudio logo right here. And ta-da, there it is. Conveniently, Bioconductor itself comes pre-installed in the default RStudio environment in Terra. And on top of that, I've already installed a few packages using the Bioconductor package manager with the commands shown here commented out. There are several different ways you could import data into your RStudio environment. I'm going to use the one that is most natural for Terra, that is, pulling data from a data table. Specifically, I'm going to pull in the example data from the HCA Optimus workspace, which is another public workspace hosted by the Human Cell Atlas project that demonstrates how to use the Optimus pipeline for single cell RNA-seq analysis. Now, it's surprisingly straightforward to pull in the data tables thanks to the Anvil package, which comes in really handy here. I just specify what workspace I want to pull from like this. And I can peek at the tables from the workspace and decide from that um, that I want to work with one particular table uh, called sample sets, which holds the outputs of the pipeline that was run in that workspace. I'm going to extract one row like this and take a peek at what's in there. Okay, this lists the native Optimus outputs, which are NumPy based and split into several files. And there's also a Loom file that's output for compatibility with other tool chains. But what we have here is still just a set of file paths. So let's retrieve the files themselves. So let's start by creating a directory to hold this data. First, I get the sample name from the table. Then I create the directory itself using standard R commands. Next, I've got to specify which columns contain the file paths I want. And finally, it's a matter of running a gsutil command from the Google Cloud Utilities to retrieve each of the files from the bucket where they're stored. Now, conveniently, gsutil is wrapped in the Anvil package, so I don't need to mess around with OS function. Again, it's very handy. 
Once all the transfers are complete, I check the files panel here on the right. And as you can see, all the files are there and ready for me to work with. So now it's time to convert this data from files into a single cell experiment data structure. The simplest option is to use the loom experiment package to import the loom file. And this gives me the right format, though you'll see there are some fields without any values. That's because the loom file leaves out some information. Depending on what you're aiming to do, this might be enough. But if not, then you would use the slightly more complicated option, which is to import the native Optimus file. And it's worth noting that if you have the original directory structure output by the Optimus pipeline, you don't actually have to specify all of the file paths. But here I flattened the directory structure by copying the files to a single directory. So I have to do this. So now I have a single cell experiment data structure, which is almost exactly the same as before, except it has a bit of extra metadata that was missing in the loom file. When you tackle your own data, it'll be up to you to determine which option is suitable based on what you need for your analysis and where to go from here. Once you've generated outputs that you want to save, you'll need to copy them back to your workspace buckets using GSUtil. I hope you'll try this out and let us know what you think. For links to the resources I used in this video, see the blog post linked in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to the Terra channel to get notified when we upload new content. Stay safe and good luck.